At the time of this recording, PHP 8.4 entered the beta release cycle, so we can finally start to discuss what we might see in the next version. Now at the top line, there's a couple new really fun features that we're going to get and some new functions that we're adding and some smaller additional pieces. Um, I think it's really something that people are going to want to upgrade to as soon as possible. But in this video, we'll discuss the timeline for the release, some of the new features and the changes that we can expect to see in the language. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe to get our latest videos when they're published. Now at the time of this recording, PHP 8.4 is scheduled to be released on November 21st, 2024, after it's gone through alpha, beta, and release candidate phases. It's always possible the date may change, as we would rather have them release working software than something with a bug. This actually happened with the 8.2 release when a critical bug was found just before the release. What's included in this release will make it easier for us to develop and maintain our code with using things like property hooks and the new array functions. But because this is a point release, it's not expected to be a painful upgrade, but plan accordingly as it isn't a given. Now, before we go much further, I have two disclaimers. The first is that this video was made using the beta release three on the official Docker image, but functionality may change between now and the actual release. So your actual output may differ from what I have. I also cannot stress enough to not install this in production yet. Sometime after the release candidates, I'll start including it in my automated tests so we can see if anything breaks in our software, but I'll wait until at least the first patch which will be 8.4.1 in this case, before we start installing it in any production environments. That being said, if you're interested in trying it now, there are Docker images available and instructions for compiling it directly from source available on the internet. Now we have that all out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that have been added. One of the most widely discussed features coming into PHP 8.4 is property hooks. And property hooks allow us to add behavior in a way that is specific to a single property while allowing that behavior to not interfere with existing aspects of PHP. In practice, we can use property hooks by defining a set and get operator that will be performed while setting or getting a property. The classic way to get around this before 8.4 was to use a getter or a setter pair or logic inside the get and set magic methods. But these both had downsides. With the setters and getters, we had to maintain both a setter and a getter. And with the magic methods, it could break static analysis tools. Property hooks in themselves can be a little confusing to understand as they're a little abstract, but I have two favorite examples on how property hooks can work that might help. The first is that we might have a user class where we're tracking both a first and a last name, but we have occasions where we want to get and set the full name. Uh, I should point out at this point that I did steal this from the RFC and modify a little as it is a great example. As you can see from our example, we've replaced the trailing semicolon of the property with a code block that we then put the property hook into. In this case, we have a get that we are returning the first and the last name concatenate together, and we have a set where we explode the value and then place it into the first and the last values. Now, a cool thing about property hooks is that we're not required to define both the get and the set. And by excluding one or the other, we can make the property read only or write only. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the only way to create a write only property in PHP. The other logic that will be extremely helpful for is for validating that a value is correct. In this example on the screen, I have a state ID property that I don't ever want the value to be less than zero. So we can check and make sure that when we're passing that value, if it is less than zero, we'll get an exception. Now this is a trivial example, but it's going to be perfect for finite state machines because we can validate the transition is valid before we allow it to occur. PHP 8.4 is also adding new functions that will make it easier for us to search our arrays without having to write a lot of boilerplate code. The first function we're going to discuss is the array find function, which returns the value of the first element for which a custom callback function returns true. If no match is found, then the function will return null. In the example on the screen, I'm trying to find the first element that has a length of six, which turns out to be Samuel. The array find key function returns the key of the first element for which the custom callback function returns true. If no match is found, then the function will return null. And in this example on screen, I'm again looking for the first element that has a length of six, and it returns the key of one, which is the second element of Samuel. The array any function returns true if any element for a custom callback function returns true. If no match is found, then the function will return false again. For the example on the screen, I'm checking to see if any of the array elements has a length of six, and if it is, it returns true. 
I can also change this. So if, if any element has a length of 60, then it returns true, but there aren't any, so it's going to return false. Finally, the array all function returns true if all of the elements for the custom callback return true. If any element causes the callback to return false, it's going to return false. And this is going to be very helpful for doing validation. If we want to make sure that all of the names are six or less characters, we can very easily do that. The next thing up is a small syntactical change, but it's going to be really beneficial for everybody. Before PHP 8.4, if we wanted to create an instance of a class and then call a method on the newly instantiated class, we could do so by wrapping the new in parentheses. PHP 8.4 changes this so we can exclude those parentheses, which should make it a lot easier to read and write. One of the most interesting parts about the RFC is the fact that because of this change, more than a half a million lines of open source PHP code could be simplified. We'll have more about PHP 8.4 after this word from our sponsors. Do you want higher clarity in production, but don't have the time to earn your degree in observability? Me too. Forget logs, metrics, and traces. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events. When you send your application logs and other events to Honey Badger, you'll unlock the power of Honey Badger's powerful new querying language, Badger QL. You can then use Badger QL to ask any question about your data, convert any event into a metric, and chart your metrics on a custom dashboard. You can do all of this on Honey Badger's free plan as part of their comprehensive monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, status pages, and more. Speaking of error tracking, did you know that an error is really just a first class event in Honey Badger? In fact, you can use Insights and Badger QL to explore all of your existing Honey Badger data in new ways. It's pretty cool. Give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. Next up, a new attribute is being added to allow us to mark functions, class constants, and enum cases as deprecated. PHP internal functions and constants can be marked as deprecated, but the deprecated attribute will now allow us to mark code as deprecated and it will be treated as such. This was functionality we could replicate before 8.4 using the trigger error, but it's going to be so much easier to have this functionality built in, especially because I can never remember what level of error I need to send. Also new in PHP 8.4 are four new rounding modes to the round function. If you're anything like me, you didn't even know that round allowed you to specify how it should do the rounding, but we now have more control over that. The new modes allow you to round to the nearest integer bigger than the number, round to the nearest integer lower than the number, round, always round away from zero, and always round towards zero. The other things that are being changed that I'd like to briefly mention are... PHP 8.4 brings improvements to the xdom extension, uh, including HTML5 support. Uh, we may have to do a video on the xdom extension at some point because it can be super helpful for anybody trying to parse data from a website. Two new functions have been added to make it easier to work with HTTP responses. These functions are the HTTP get last response headers and the HTTP clear last response headers, which will allow us to get and clear the errors. This is being done so the HTTP response header variable can be removed from PHP. So if you're using HTTP response header, now would be the time to start removing it. More multi-byte functions have also been added to handle case and trim logic that's currently not supported. Four extensions that are currently part of the source code are no longer going to be part of the source distribution and will instead be moved to Peckle. Again, the default cost for bcrypt in the password hash function has changed to cope with the fact that computers continue to get faster and faster. If you're using password hash with the default parameters, you shouldn't have to change anything, but you should make sure you're also using the password needs rehash to see if the current password needs to be rehashed, as this will only be helpful if you're using both. There are also some parts of the language that will be deprecated and will be removed in 9. The one that I think is going to have the largest impact on most developers is a to change how PHP automatically creates implicit nullable types in our functions. Currently, we can create a parameter to a function that can be a type or null and specify that the default value is null. Behind the scenes, PHP is actually converting this to something more like the following. It's a minor difference, but it is more correct. This change in PHP 8.4 will deprecate the functionality that allows this to happen with the idea that it's going to be removed in PHP 9. As a recap, PHP 8.4 is set to release on November 21st, 2024. Major changes include property hooks and the new array functions. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like, as it does help others find us. Other topics that you'd like to see us cover, let us know in the comments section below, or send me a message on phpc.social. We'd love to hear how we can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off, and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.